Fellowship, and welcome to our Sunday morning worship service for April 19, 2020. I'm so glad that we're able to gather together, even though it's over technology and we're away. And let's worship the Lord together today uh, in spirit and in truth. I'd like to begin us with a word from Scripture from Psalm 91, verses 1 through 10. It says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for it is He who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and bulwark. You will not be afraid of the terror by night, or of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or of the destruction that lay waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. You will only look on with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. For you have made the Lord my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. This psalm reminds us that our security is in God himself. It's not in any other protection that we may have or any other circumstance of the world, but the Most High God who we know, who we believe in, who we trust, is our strength, our deliverer, and our security. I hope this service today encourages us all to trust Him more and more and to look to Him for the answers and for the guide for our life. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this time together. And right now, Lord, we just invoke your presence. We just realize your presence in our hearts, your indwelling presence, and also that presence that you say is that you're among us when two or three are gathered in your name. So, Lord, I just ask you in this time to meet us in a special way this morning, ICF Church family, that we will be together in spirit and in truth and lift you high in worship and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, ICF Church family. We are so excited to be with you this morning. Please continue to watch Facebook and check your email to stay up to date with things going on in the life of the church. There's new and exciting things happening each week. Ladies Coffee will be Tuesday at 4.45 p.m. via Zoom. For more information concerning that, please contact Elena. Men's Morning Brew will be Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. via Zoom. For more information about that, see Mike Miller. Wednesday Midweek Word will be at 6.30 p.m. right here on Facebook and YouTube. Another exciting thing is, is ICF Kids goes online Fridays at 10 a.m. right here on Facebook and YouTube. Men's Fellowship will be April 25th via Zoom at 9 a.m. For information concerning that, please talk to Mike. We'll see you next Sunday right here on Facebook and YouTube. Have a good week. You give life. You are love. You bring life.
mention a few of the answered prayers and praise reports and prayer requests that some of you have shared. The first is that we are thanking the Lord, all of us, for our daily provision that He is providing right now and for our health. And, and we are always, or we should always be thankful for these things, but I think during this time we're especially thankful um, for His daily blessings. Also, in some of our ministry teams, uh, um, our vision team, as many of you know, has been working on the bylaws and some of those things and, and just the vision, overall vision for the church. And we've just really felt recently God's hand at work within that team. And so we're praising the Lord for that. And we hope to have maybe a report at the, at the general church meeting that we'll have uh, at some point soon. And so uh, we just praise the Lord for how God is at work in the vision team. I'd also like to praise the Lord for um, our services, our virtual services, and especially for our interactive Bible studies and our children's moment. I know that uh, our, our Bible studies over Zoom on Tuesday evenings and on Wednesday mornings continue to grow. And I think that children's moment on Fridays has just been uh, very much a, a, a blessing to me and I know to the, the children of ICF. So I praise the Lord for that and thank, thank Him for how He's working through our church during this time. Some prayer requests. Um, please continue to remember the Werner family. Mark and Normita Werner, as Mark's mother, um, passed away um, over a week ago, and uh, we continue to join our hearts in prayer with them. Also, uh, it was mentioned in, our, in one of our Bible studies this week that there are fires there in Honduras. 
wildfires and, and some not far from San Pedro. So we'd like to especially lift that up as a, as a prayer concern, lift that up before the Lord as, as a church family. We also want to remember the frontline health care workers and people working in hospitals and clinics and also in the essential businesses right now, also in Honduras and the U.S. and throughout the world. Also continue to remember Mike Miller's dad who continues uh, to battle cancer and he's had an especially rough time lately so lift up Mike's family and, and especially his dad. We'd like to also remember uh, Barbara and Carl Clausen who live in Tella and attend our church uh, quite often and uh, we're very thankful for them and just want to lift up a special prayer uh, for Barbara and Carl this morning. Let's go to the Lord. Lord, thank you for this day, this time together. Thank you for this church, that we are your people called by your name, that we are true believers and that we're on a mission. And Lord, we come to you this morning worshiping you in spirit and in truth around your word and in song and in fellowship together. And Lord, we pray and ask for your special blessing on this fellowship. And during this time when we're having to meet over the internet and our connections, we ask for your continued blessing in that, that you will help our hearts to connect in spirit and also in technology and help us to be quick to be um, on the phone with each other and, um, and caring for one another. And so, Lord, I just ask you in a, in a mighty way to bless this service and all of our internet services. Lord, we especially remember the request that we have lifted up this morning. Lord, uh, those frontline healthcare workers, especially around the world, and the fires in Honduras, and those individual prayer needs that we've lifted up. Lord, we know you, and we know that you are our healer, as we read earlier, that you are our security, that you are the one in which we trust. And so we just humble ourselves before you this morning. Lord, seeking your power, putting ourselves and realizing our, our own place of humility and realizing your power. And we ask you for that this morning. Lord, I personally thank you for how you're providing in my life. And I know I echo that prayer uh, out to among our, our whole congregation. And Lord, we remember those who are in especially tough situations and who find themselves sick or hospitalized from the coronavirus. And, so, and those that find themselves with loved ones being sick or even, even those who have had uh, friends and loved ones to have died from this virus and from other causes during this time. Lord, we pray our prayer is that you end this virus and that you heal the world and that you heal the world of sin, Lord, and that your redemption be known to mankind. And Lord, we know that you're willing that none should perish but that all should come to repentance. And so, Lord, we pray that that redeeming work will go throughout the world and we present ourselves as your people by whom you want to do that work. Lord, here we are. Send us. Send us into the world, Lord, on your mission. Lord, we pray that we won't pass up any opportunity to be agents of restoration, Lord, to be, to, to be sharing the gospel and sharing the hope that is within us. Lord, we know, and as we're going to see in, in the message today, we're in a time of spiritual warfare. And so, Lord, we pray that you will help us to see today that the weapons that we have, Lord, are divinely powerful, that they are yours, and that for us not to depend on our own flesh or our, or our own reasoning, but to depend completely on Lord, as we continue this service, we ask you to bless each part. And Lord, we hold Christ at the very center of all that we do here today. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible teaches us to worship the Lord by giving a portion of that with which he blesses us. This morning we continue our service as we always do with the time for you to worship the Lord in giving. 
we have a couple of ways that we would encourage you to give, one of which is our online giving option. You can go to our website, icfsanpedro.org, and you'll also get that link out on email uh, once or twice each week. And so you can go there and, and give electronically. If that's not an option for you, we ask you to continue to put aside the portion with which you give and worship the Lord and to be ready to offer that when we're able to meet again together. chapter 10 verses 3 through 5. And we're going to talk, be talking about spiritual warfare which is a topic we probably don't cover enough and I feel like God has led me to this scripture this week. Throughout the history of mankind there have been wars between people 
And throughout the history of war, there has been different there have been different kinds of weapons. And so all kinds of weapons, back to primitive weapons, back in the in the very beginning in ancient people, to now even very technologically advanced weapons. And I'd like to share a weapon with you. Uh, I found a picture this week of a uh, and came across this weapon which the ancient Chinese used. This weapon is called a zuha, and it is. It looks kind of funny. Looks, I guess that's a replica. It looks almost like a toy or something. But you'll see it has a hand on the very end there. And, and in those hands, it has some long claws. And then it's on a long rod. And so the point of this weapon was to get close enough to your adversary that you could use this tool to to remove their weapon, to disarm them, and then and maybe cause them some harm also. Maybe, maybe disarm them while going on the offense. So you would essentially leave your opponent helpless. That's the way our spiritual weapons are. And the spiritual weapons that we're going to talk about this morning, which is we're going to see are divinely powerful. And we have an enemy. We have an adversary. And God has given us the Holy Spirit in us to fight spiritual battles. And it's real. And today I hope that we're, we're encouraged and challenged to do that God's way, to fight our spiritual battles God's way with His weapons. And I hope that we'll find that we can be confident that using those weapons and putting them at the right targets and faithfully executing what God has put in our hearts leaves our enemy powerless. Let's look at the Scripture. 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3-5, through 5, short passage. The Apostle Paul writes, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your word. We need not add to it. Lord, we ask you that you will speak these words to our hearts this morning, that the Holy Spirit will teach us this morning what you have for us to learn, and I pray that we will be better equipped to face the days ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, hear this passage. We walk in the flesh. So we do walk in the flesh. It says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. We live in natural bodies. We live in this flesh. We even live in this sin-cursed world. And our natural lives are a part of life. But when it comes to the war that we are in, we don't fight that war according to the flesh. So, the question, the question I'd like to ask right off the bat, and many of you may be asking, is what constitutes spiritual warfare? How do I know when I'm just having a bad day or when I'm under attack? And, and here's, here's some keys just to give us some general ideas of what constitutes spiritual warfare. Challenges to God, His person, His truth, his sovereignty, the fact that he's, on, he's in control, and direct attacks against the Son of God, Jesus Christ. When we, think, when we encounter things that are coming against God in that way, and albeit they may be subtle ways, and we may not be able to, to recognize them right off the bat. But when you really look at issues and you really look at problems, when they are going against what God has said, or the character of God, or the person of God, you can bet that there's something behind that issue. 
We're facing spiritual warfare on many fronts right now. And I don't pretend to fully understand God's sovereignty, sovereignty as it pertains to sickness and death and pandemics and those things like that. But we do know what we know. And what we know is that everything God allows to happen on this earth works toward bringing His redemption to humanity. So we can trust that God, no matter what circumstances are happening on this earth, that God is drawing people to Himself to save them. We've seen that through, we see that throughout the redemptive history that we find here in the Bible. So we know that. We need not be confused about that. And when the world is painted in another way, then we know that spiritual warfare. Another thing that we know is that everything the devil does works toward blocking God's redemption to humanity. So when we look around and we see we see the world and we see in the midst of this pandemic and in different countries and different media outlets and different people talking and, and different things, when the blocks are put up to what God is doing, which is saving mankind and drawing Him to Himself, when, when, when the picture is painted otherwise, we know that it's spiritual warfare. Warfare. We know it's the devil's ministry to scatter God's people. We see that throughout this book. It's nothing new. But does God let that stop His redemptive will? Absolutely not. Again, we see that through this entire book. What is meant for evil, God will use for good over and over and over. But that leaves us to navigate it. So I'd like to just we're just gonna go through some principles. You may hear me say rule number one or principle number one or something like that. But the first one is we are at war with the forces of darkness. Make no mistake, we are in a war. And we must principle two or rule two is that we must fight that battle with the right weapon. I've used this example before. We are not on a cruise ship as Christians. We are on a battleship. And if we're on a battleship, and, and imagine yourself on a real battleship in, in, a, in a war, in a political war, in, in a war between people. If you are on a battleship with big, great, destructive weapons, and you were fighting against an enemy, you wouldn't stand on the deck of that battleship and throw rocks at the enemy, would you? No! You would use the weapons that are on the battleship for fighting the enemy. Our fleshly weapons don't work in spiritual warfare. So, here are a couple of examples, three examples maybe, of what, that, of what those weapons are, those fleshly weapons that don't work. One is worry. Worry which is sustained by endless discussion and debate and politics. We might find this in, in a lot of the media outlets that, that, we, that we encounter during this, this pandemic. It just causes more worry and more fear. And then that leads to fearful reaction, which is another weapon that we try to use. We, we get in fear and so we do things to try to, to try to correct the situation. And when we're operating out of fear, it's not going to work. It's not going to work in the battle. And another is impulsive behavior. It's easy for us to do things out of fear and act on impulse it doesn't work. That's warring in the flesh. And the Bible says we don't war according to the flesh. Let's look at verse 4. 
So not only are our weapons not of the flesh, they are divinely powerful. It says here, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful. Our weapons are powered by God. The reason we don't war in the flesh or use the fleshly weapons is because those, those weapons are powered by the flesh. Our weapons, the weapons that God gives us in spiritual warfare, are powered by Him because there is a dark enemy that we can't face in the flesh. We must, it takes God to defeat Satan. And so the weapons that the Holy Spirit uses within us. So instead of out there throwing rocks on the deck of a battleship, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, we have real weapons. You might imagine like cannons and torpedoes and things that a real battleship have, has which actually destroys the enemy. So the third principle of spiritual warfare is that we must be familiar and proficient in using our divine weapons. So you say, Brother Chris, what are those weapons? You say, okay, I, I see what you're saying. Think things that come against God, and, and if we have God living in us, are, are going to come against us. And we're going to fight that battle, not in the flesh, and use these weapons. Well, what are they? Well, the first one is the Word of God. And we should believe God's Word and what it says over the world. See, that's where it starts. And, and, and again, I'm, I'm a person who loves uh, Scripture memorization and quoting Scripture and all of that. But where it starts is believing what God says over what the world says. Because once we believe it and we trust it and we act on it in the power of the Holy Spirit, then God's living and active Word becomes alive in us on the world. And when we are operating, walking, thinking, acting, talking in the power that is God's Word at work in us through the power of the Holy Spirit, when we're doing that, we are powerful against our enemy. The second, and, and that's related, is prayer. I'd like to suggest a nuance of that prayer as a spiritual uh, weapon. And that is that it starts with listening to God's still, small voice over the blustering voices of the world. See, it's connected with God's Word because God speaks to us through His Word and He also speaks to us through prayer. So I want to encourage you during this time as we all turn to prayer more and more, I think, each day, to listen to God, to listen to His still, small voice and how He is guiding you for the steps of your life. And the second part of prayer that is super powerful as a divinely powerful weapon is to pray in accordance with God's will. See, if we know God's will, we know that His will is to redeem humanity. We know that He wants everyone to know Him. We know that His will is that we are His witnesses and on His mission, and we pray our prayers in accordance to that will. He will answer our prayers more and more. And I just have to tell you, just as a word of testimony, this week, in some of the struggles and some of the just some of the things that we faced this past week, I found God to be faithful in this aspect specifically. Praying in accordance with His will. See, we don't know everything. We don't know tomorrow. We we only see as 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 in a dimly lit mirror. As, as uh, the New Testament describes, we can't see the whole picture, but we know that God does. And we know things like He is working all things together for good to those that love Him. We know that He sent His only Son to die so that people can, can know Him and go to heaven. We know He's the way, the truth, and the life. We know He is our Good Shepherd and He is guiding us. And right now, I'm just going to tell you the messages, and they may be subtly disguised, but a lot of the messages that we are receiving are, from the world are counter to that. 
We read in Psalm 91 this morning that God is the one who we can depend on for our security. Trust God's Word. Use God's Word. Believe God's Word and live it as a divinely powerful weapon against the forces of darkness. And pray in accordance with His will. These are our weapons. Verse 5 describes it, uh, actually 4 and 5, that our weapons are for destroying fortresses and speculations. Here in verse 5 it says, we are destroying speculations. That speculation, that, that literally just means, uh, uh, we would put it to mean human reasoning. We might say endless debate. Endless discussion. We are destroying those things. Now, why is that? Why is, let's say, uh, speculation or, or human reasoning or what we think, why is that such a powerful part of spiritual warfare? Well, it's because it's one of the devil's primary ministries. Actually, it was the first ministry that the devil, the first tactic that the devil used against mankind. If we go back to Genesis 3, what will we find? We'll find in Genesis 3 verse 1, we'll find the devil say, Did God really say? We find the devil ask that question. Did God really say? Human speculation. Human doubt. Endless, non-spiritual talk is the devil's ministry. The Apostle Paul says we are destroying that. Now the interesting thing is the immediate context of these verses is that the Apostle Paul is being challenged from within the church. As a missionary, as a pastor, as an apostle, the apostle Paul is being challenged from within the church and he's writing these things as a response. He says, we are destroying speculations through prayer, through the word of God. Principle number four is that we must use our weapons against strategic targets which are fortresses and speculations. Speculations, endless discussion, endless debate, doubting about what did God really say or what did God really mean, those speculations lead to fortresses which are strongholds in our lives. Some of the things that we think we know some of the things that we hold so tightly are the devil's strong. During this pandemic, I think one of the silver linings is that we're all being forced to evaluate the important things in our life. And we're all being forced uncomfortable I, I forced out of our comfort zone into uncomfortable things and circumstances that make us count cost I want to encourage you as we all go through this process let's let the Holy Spirit point out those strongholds and fortresses in our hearts and in our lives. Let's let the Holy Spirit show us where in our hearts and our minds we're trusting in man over God. I'm speaking this this, this morning out of personal conviction. Uh, I, I hope this applies to you. But I'm just giving you the work that God has been doing in my own heart 
in my own mind. We must destroy our own speculations and the places the devil has a foothold in our lives. And we must challenge what we think we know. By measuring, against, by measuring it against God's will and praying in God's will, not our own. So we think about war and fighting positions, whether they be in, on a machine like a large battleship or in a plane or a tank or personal. I think our battle position has to be on our knees in prayer. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. I just want to encourage you this morning. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's against the dark forces of evil in this world. And the weapons that we must use against these as God's people, as Christians, are not of the flesh. They're divinely powerful for destroying speculations and fortresses, strongholds of God. I want to encourage you to stay connected. And I want to encourage you to continue to participate in these virtual services and in one of our Bible studies. And I know some people aren't comfortable in those virtual Bible studies. So if, if, if you need to talk, please reach out to me. Shoot me an email or one of the other elders. Uh, my email is icfsps at gmail.org. Feel free to, to email me because we want to walk through this time with you together. And God is doing a mighty work through his church right now. But it's not comfortable and we must stick together and be spiritually strong in order to make it through. Another way we do that or, or a part of doing that is through our spiritual nourishment which is to be connected. And each week in, at ICF we participate in the Lord's Supper to keep our minds focus on who our Lord is and what He's done for us. So this morning, in just a few moments, we're going to remember the Lord's death through the taking of the bread and the cup. And as we prepare our hearts to do that this morning, I just want to ask you to empty yourself. And if this is, and if you find yourself not knowing the Lord in personal relationship, not ever having submitted yourself and repenting of your sin and, and giving yourself to the Lord, I invite you to do that this morning. One of my favorite verses is Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. That just means that if you know that you don't know Him right now, if you know that you need to begin a relationship with Him right now, that's the Holy Spirit telling you that. I can guarantee you that's God telling you that. And so I would just ask you, just confess that. Say, Lord, I feel you drawing me and I want to come to you. And, and, and the, 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 the second part is to confess Jesus as Lord, that, that Jesus Jesus Christ came and lived a perfect life, gave that life on the cross in your place. And so I invite you to just tell Him you believe it. Believe that this morning. If you do that, and you're praying, and you're coming in that heart for the first time this morning, we'd, we'd like to ask you to join us in, in the memorial of communion, in the sacrament we call it, of where... We cleanse our hearts and minds. For those of us who already know Jesus as we prepare our hearts for, for the bread and the cup, I ask you to confess your sins. The Bible says confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man 
it availeth much. So I want to invite you this morning, repent of your sins before God and enjoy the, the, the memorial of the broken body of Christ and the poured out blood of Christ by emptying your sin before Him. I want to have a time of prayer before we have communion. Lord, we come this morning Hopefully some, under the sound of my voice, coming to you for the first time, knowing you and recognizing you as Savior and Lord. And Lord, others of us who are coming, Lord, confessing our sins. Lord, that, that, that we go our own way, that we do depend on ourselves at, time, that we, at times, that we do find speculations and, and strongholds of, of Satan in our own lives. And Lord, we pray right now that you would remove those and we empty those before you. We lay those at your feet and we ask you, Lord, to do this work in our hearts and minds today. We thank you for this special time each week. We thank you for the work of Calvary. We thank you that you are our living hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The body of Christ, broken. The blood of Christ pour out the sins of humanity. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. And until we meet again, may we all trust Jesus. May we find ourselves in our most powerful battle position on our knees in prayer more this, this coming week than we did last week. And may we live out God's Word in all aspects of our lives.